Hi, welcome to the Lisa Saunders Show. I'm Lisa Saunders, and I have with me not only a fabulous artist, but she's also my sister-in-law. So, who are you? <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I am Marianne Greiner, and I am an illustrator who's passionate about children's books. And I've been looking at your children's illustrations since I've known you, because you've always kind of had a childlike way of drawing. Although you do do other things, but how long have we known each other? Oh my goodness, I, Lisa, it has to be over 30 years, I right? Know, how long have you been married? I always get this wrong, and I'm sure my husband's going to be watching. <laughs> it's 33 or 34 years. And I, you know, I guess we dated for, I don't know, a couple of years ahead. Anyway, we've known each other more than 35 years. Correct. And I've been looking at your illustrations forever, and I love them. And thank you so much, because you illustrated some of my books, Ride yes. a Horse, Not an Elevator, um, and some lost ones. Anyway, so thank you so much for coming all the way from where? I live in... Victor, New York, so upstate New York. Okay, because whereabout is that? Because it's just south uh, east of Rochester. Okay, so people can probably visualize that yes. a little bit. Um, but anyway, thank you for coming to visit us in Mystic. We've been having a lot of fun. And one of the things we got to do together was to put a book that you wrote a long time ago on Amazon. That's correct. <laughs> So, so that was a lot of fun, right? Yeah, that was <laughs> learning how to do that. That was <laughs> yes, that was an incredible experience because um, it was kind of unexpected for us to really do that. I know that that we had talked about it. Um, I didn't know the process of it, and because you are experienced, you were able to encourage me to do it. And I think the best part about putting the book together the other day and putting it on Amazon is that uh, oftentimes we become so perfection orientated that we. Um, want to make everything perfect and we didn't do that we instead of be, have being in that dream state and making everything perfect we decided d-o-n-e get it done and that's <laughs> what we did and so I thank you for that and it was exciting and it's charming Aww. I can't wait to get my copy of course Jim ordered one right away <laughs> 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 Your brother's a good good audience. Anyway, I can't, and it's so it's charming. I really, really love it. Um, and we, you sent us some slides that we can show here in the studio. Yes, so, that's correct. So you'll go ahead and read us a few, the first couple pages of your book. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and see those uh, couple pages of her book. Okay, the title of the book is The Substitute, and I named it that because I am a substitute teacher. And this is the first page. It, it's compiled of a bunch of different characters. And um, so I'm just going to go ahead and read page one. On the day that Mrs. Thayer was there, David woke up with crazy hair. Mackenzie didn't know what to wear. And Cole finally found a pair. On the day that Mrs. Thayer was there, Joanna had to ride, ride a mare. Anna thought she saw a bear. That's so cute and so crazy and random. Like, how did you? It's just a book, little book that makes me smile. And I know people have to get the book to find out what happens at the end. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, it's just a charming little silly. But everything rhymes. Every single page rhymes. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. It does. So what? And this is something you wrote and illustrated a long time ago. Yes, I did it primarily because I was a homeschool teacher. I homeschooled my daughter through sixth grade, and um, she had some reading disabilities. So I wanted just to create something fun for her that we could read together and that rhymed to engage her to develop a love of reading. Um, I myself had some difficulty as a child reading. I do have uh, dyslexia. However, I've been able to manage that. and. Um, I started noticing that she had some of those same uh, tendencies, so I thought, well, I know you have to read out loud to your child and you have to continue to read, so we made the library an incredible resource. Um, and I found that rhyming was just engaging. Mm -hmm. And um, because I like to have fun, and yeah. I think children <laughs> like to have fun, I think that learning needs to be fun, especially when um, you have some difficulties to overcome. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, that book must have really set her on the right path because she has a four-year degree now in what? Is it math? I can't remember. She but. has a four-year degree in applied mathematics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously. So she's she's doing really well. And your artwork has just been a part of 
me using it for messages I want, wanted to get out there. And you actually went back to school. Yes, I went back to school when I was 58 years old. Um, I never finished my graphic design degree, and so that was something I felt that was really important, primarily because um, five years ago I could do solitaire or get an email. I had very limited computer skills, and I felt that technology was not going to go away, and especially in <laughs> That's the. That's what we're all hoping it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, you, no kidding. But you realize, it, and it's horrible because you're an artist, like doing this fabulous images like this. But you, you needed, you had to have yes. those backup skills. Yes. Now, why does an artist need computer skills? Um, well, for a number of different reasons reasons. Um, artists need to promote themselves and it's very difficult to promote yourself today without a digital portfolio, a website, a blog site, um, something, Instagram and all that other kind of stuff, something that you can instantly show someone so you know, here's my work because people want to see that. And Oh, is there a way we can see your digital portfolio? Yeah, well, it's um, it it's like, on my LinkedIn page, but it um, is. So, can anybody go and look? Yeah. Or are you going to stick it on your blog, or are you Probably. only gonna, are you going to only let people that have your that are whatever connected in LinkedIn? To see no, it? actually, that's a fantastic idea, Lisa. <laughs> I should just put it on my blog because <laughs> we so, did. Yeah, I, I can did do just that. Teach you how to do that yeah. yesterday, <laughs> and we have your first post on there. <laughs> so yes. yeah, because I think people are going to get a kick out of it because you've been doing. Like I said, it's drawing since I've known you, and there's just you have a lot of work to show, and you need to get it out there to the world. Wait, your greeting cards are always fabulous. Oh, I mean, I've too. saved them every single one because you you give us specifically Im drawn greeting cards. Is that anything you might do? You know, um, or what are your plans now that yeah, you have this no. degree and you're still a teacher? <laughs> you love to teach art. Um, what are your plans, or what are your? Um, well, I. My, my well, the first thing was to get familiar with Create Space, which you helped me to do because I have another book that was my primary reason for going to school, and the book is called Friends. And because I have moved so many times in my life, I have kept up the relationships of people all over the country. In fact, I have a friend all in over Brazil. The world. Actually, yeah, you and, lived in yes, Germany too. Yes, all but, over the world. Yes. That's correct. And I'm I'm big on relations, and I'm always fascinated that. Um, that when we move away, when we connect up again, whether it's been six months or three years, it's like we're, we, it's so familiar. We, we, our relationship really hasn't gone away. We are who we are. And so the book friends is what I really want to concentrate on and um, develop. So that's that's a goal. That's my next goal. And greeting cards would be wonderful. I would love to do a line of greeting cards, yes. And now I have the capability because I've learned uh, so much in at college. Okay, so what is this project? This example? was a project done in gouache. It's a watercolor medium that is an opaque medium. It's the first one I ever did. Um, it was for a graphic illustration course that was taught by um, a renowned children's book illustrator, uh, Elaine Verstrait. She was she's unbelievable. She has so many books. And um, what we had to do here was uh, take a picture of ourselves and take a picture of someone who's famous and blend the two together. Because oh, it's so, so obvious. Because <laughs> when I first saw it, you sent it to me on my phone. I'm like, Jackie, Oak, you know, Onassis. And I'm like, wait a minute. That looks like Marianne, too. So you did it because I could tell it's both of you. <laughs> well, um, that, that was the uh, intent of the project, yes. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you. Do you have other things that you? I do. I don't know how well they'll show up, but you can um, during um, during some of the courses that I took, we had to do a wine label design, and um, I researched the millennials and found out a lot of fascinating Am statistics. I, are we millennials? Or who, um, no, that's younger were, people. People right? who were born. Yeah, we're baby boom, right? <laughs> Yeah, yes, okay. we are. We're baby boomers. Okay. Um, but the millennials were um, born like in the later 80s up through um, the year 2000, okay. basically. And they're a generation of people who think quite differently than we do. They're looking for fun labels. Um, so this is for wine, because you live in wine country. Yes. Um, and there's 
wine trails all over the place. I mean, it's just yes. winery after winery. So did you choose this project doing wine labels or is that? It was, I know it was an assigned project, uh -huh. but I chose to um, dovetail off of some statistics about millennials who like animals more than people. <laughs> and I happen to live in an apartment complex now with a lot of very young uh, millennials, and I'm like the only person who doesn't have a dog. So I thought it would be fun to create a wine label that um, was called White Wolf Wines <laughs> and uh, and put on there just doggone good. So, uh, and, uh, and these yeah. wines, at least, like, these dogs are hysterical. <laughs> this one's smiling, oh, the tail's wagging, you can tell. This one's got, it's excited to get its uh, red wine, matching its red bow tie. <laughs> with a piece of cheese. I mean, this is great. And then did you actually put the labels on a bottle of wine and yeah, then take a picture? Yes, that was oh part gosh. of the project because this was actually done at a... Um, oh, I just realized the cheese is cut in the shape of a bone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you get an A? I think I did. <laughs> Oh, that is so cute. Oh, thank can, you. Can, you, can I, do you have these labels? Like, can I peel, can I, can I put them on my I own? I can produce one for you, yes, so that you can put it on for your, as you drink. Because part of the marketing um, strategy for this project that I, I personally did was that, um, we encourage responsible drinking at home with your pooch. And so, <laughs> yes, Lisa, I can do. I can print one off for you so that you can slap it right on a because wine bottle. Because when I buy a uh, wine gift for somebody, I often go by the, the label, because I'm not a wine connoisseur, but if the label's cute, then we can have fun just looking at the wine label. And this is fun, anyway. <laughs> you know, actually, that that is um, something that's currently occurring in upstate New York where many wineries are remarketing their wine labels because people do pay attention and they do buy according to their labels. And so many labels are done traditionally, mm -hmm. I think, but because the target audience today wants to have fun. Right. And, and anyway, so anyway, that's that. Okay, yeah. so now what else yeah, are the projects did you have? What else do we have here? Um, this one here was um, a scratch board. You put ink on it and then you scratch away. And this was oh. also done for a graphic illustration class. Um, the theme of what we had to do was to um, trade places with a bug. So I traded places with a <laughs> ladybug because I love polka dots and I even have polka dot shoes at home. So it just seemed appropriate for me to do that theme. And uh, this was did show in a uh, student art show this past um, April at the college I was in, and uh, it was just fun. It's wow. Fun. It's and, real, are you going to do a children's book on this character? You know, you know I do? actually could. I haven't given, I uh, haven't thought beyond what I've done right now. With, <laughs> just just because a few days ago you showed me how to get on Creative Space. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm excited for what's going to come next because I, I can just see a series because you've already done several little children's books with rhyming and these great illustrations. So I can just see you doing a series and really you have a heart for people with Dys dyslexia, is that what it's called? Yes, dyslexic? dyslexia. Okay. Um, yes. And, and you said there was a font for that now? That yes. You could, okay. So what I became, yeah, I'm sorry. It's Excuse okay. me. What I became aware of um, in one of my courses with one of my professors was that her son was dyslexic. And she uh, introduced me to a website called the uh, Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity. And that's right here in Connecticut. It is right here wow. in Connecticut. <laughs> and um, they've done a lot of research to help children with that learning disability. Um, I've looked up some statistics, and apparently 15% of our population is dyslexic. Wow. Um, I don't know what that generates in numbers, but if that... That's not. That's high. It is well. It is high. I think that's but high. It is high. But they're they're making great strides in that. And through that um, website, I was also made aware, and through my professor, that um, they have come up with a font. It's called. I think it's called Dyslexi Font, and uh, you can purchase that to use, and it helps children read. They have figured out that. Um, 
when you're dyslexic, your, your disability is kind of invisible in a sense because um, you are thinking pictorially. So words like the and was and is are very hard for you to associate a picture with. So um, those are the stumbling blocks when you're, you're reading. And part of what I want to do eventually, my vision, is to write books for children with this font and um, fun illustrations and encourage them to read and help them to get over their disabilities. And uh, so it, it'll involve a lot of research on my part, and I'm just in the beginning stages well, of that. Well, I thought that. it was interesting because I looked up the, the font that you're talking about, and it just mentioned, um, you know, like the beginning letter of a sentence always has to be bolder. Uh, it just because a lot of things look like they run together. They try to make every letter look very distinct. So I was just reading a little bit about it. And this is where it's great that you went back to school to learn technology because then you're going to, you can't do things the average way by just picking some font that you find in Word. You have to have all these skills and design work to be able to, to design these children's books. There is a lot that goes into it, and I'm still, I still have a lot to learn, but I'm, I'm really excited because I think that um, we all have a gift, and um, so often we spend so much time dreaming about what to do, and I think people need to really step out and just do it. I mean, I, that's part of why I went back to school at a, at a later age. It took me five years to get my degree. Were you the oldest lady that came out with a degree? <laughs> Didn't they have like a big party for you? <laughs> we should have had a party with wolf wine. But anyway, no. <laughs> Not that you're old by any means, but I'm just saying. No, you true. Were like You were friends with the kids that are in their 20s, right? Oh, gosh, yeah. It was great. Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> so did they come for you for uh, like motherly advice? Or, was, or were you just endlessly asking them for advice? Oh, my gosh, how do I get on my computer? Or what? How did that work? <laughs> uh, oh, actually, it's a little combination. I think um, it felt wonderful when they were to ask me a question and I actually had the answer. <laughs> um, I think because of my age, I was in the lab extra hours all the time, and um, there were a lot of dedicated students and professors at the school uh, who were there readily there to help us. Where'd you um, go again? Where'd you get your degree? Uh, Finger Lakes Community College. Oh, and it's got such Fabulous. a nice name, oh. Finger Lakes. Oh, uh, <laughs> is it was it just all beautiful and everyone was floating around, or did you actually have to go to class and stuff? It, uh, you actually had to go to class. <laughs> Um, a fantastic community college. Uh, actually, a lot of adjunct professors were from Rochester Institute of Technology, mm. and so I felt I got an incredible education. Um, as far as getting along with the young students, um, you know, there were days where I was really surprised that um, they were struggling with technology as much, much as I was. Well, you, some of those things were really hard, though. When you were, is it InDesign? I don't know. What are some yeah, of those uh, the programs that we that had to learn? basically studied were uh, Illustrator, InDesign, and Photoshop, okay. and um, they're the Adobe products. They are uh, they were very complicated for me, and um, in addition to that, you had to learn you know white space and topography and how everything all blended together and and be skilled in the fine art piece as well as the technical piece. Well, because I, I was, you know, putting your book up with you uh, on Amazon, I loved your dedication page because I warned you, oh, don't have too many of those like boring pages <laughs> in the beginning because they let you click and look, read the first couple pages when customers look at it. But you made the dedication page fun just by putting dedication off to the side and having the substitute teacher, one of your illustrations <laughs> sitting there. I don't know. So you, I think that's got to be a combination of what you learned about this way. Although you always were a designer type of person, but you made the dedication page fun. Aw, thank you. So I'm just glad. And then when you had those white spaces, you were flinging some socks around for the kid that found a pair and you had them on other pages. <laughs> like, how did how'd these socks get on other pages? I don't know. So you just, how did these things come to you? I think artists have the ability just um, and just to be themselves, just to come up with things. I mean, I, to me, it's um, very important as far as an educator is concerned to help people 
be who they are and not try to be somebody else. And so each artist probably has their own story where they get their creative ideas from. I like to pull from children and elderly people in every facet of life, even looking at the sky, I mean the sunset, I mean everything around us is so full of ideas and we can take from that, pull from that and incorporate that into our artwork. And a lot of your artwork is humorous, so uh -huh. I'm just kind of <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you have a great, well you have a great laugh, but so you just must, I don't know, you see the humor in dogs and people and I don't know, which makes me wonder, would you have ever wanted to be a cartoonist or? No, I don't think that being, well, my definition of being a cartoonist is um, where it really lies. I think for me, it's more um, taking a deeper um, meaning like you know inspiring someone to read or to not believe lies about themselves that that they can press forward and be anything they want to be and to do it in a fun way so that it kind of like breaks down the stress mm -hmm. that they might be feeling and um, so a cartoonist no I think just being who I am <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't think of your stuff as cartoons, but I'm just saying but because of the humor. I just wonder how people figure out what to do. And you've always done these little stories. So I just can't wait for you to have a series. Oh, oh a series? <laughs> you already got me doing a series. Yeah. <laughs> I love well, you, Lisa. <laughs> When your daughter was little, you do cute little images of her doing whatever. It seems like you get a lot of ideas from children and watching them. Um, now, as a substitute, you've done art, and probably with little kids, but you've had teenagers, too, where it's not so easy, right? Where... Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, I did take a long-term sub job at um, our local high school and for, I think it was, six weeks. And, Were you an um, art teacher? Or yeah, I was an, okay. yeah, I was an art teacher. I just, mm -hmm. the teacher had to be gone for a long period right. of time. So uh, I oversaw some classes. I had to write the curriculum for the fifth and sixth graders or sixth and seventh graders. I forget now. It's a year ago. But um, that came easy to me because I did teach art in a uh, private school for a couple of years, elementary K through sixth grade and it's very easy for me to write a program mm -hmm. and um, just pull from life like we did all kinds of things when I was an elementary teacher. Like what? Oh I think one of the most fun projects and I'm sure that the, these kids would still talk about that is that because we live in Rochester there's a George East, Eastman house mm -hmm. and every year they have a gingerbread display so I had rivalry between the girls and the boys putting together um, gingerbread houses and then all the school staff voted on which one was the best and then we submitted them into the into the show at the George Eastman house and it was just fun and it was amazing I mean we with the one project we did we I told them they had to do a historical site in the area and they they had to research it and we went out and took pictures and put the whole thing together ah. so that they could copy something in the other the next year it was just a fun project you know um, but it, it, it was amazing what these kids could come up with when you gave them a path to follow, mm -hmm. but didn't come down on them so hard that you had too many restrictions. Mm -hmm. And they worked together in a collaborative situation, and, um, and it was just fun. Well, fun. Y well you, you think this is fun. Now, how do you... Because I can never picture you saying to a child, "Well, that drawing's really horrible." Like I, how, never. I, I know you never. never you, and you've never said that about my little sketches. <laughs> no. So you're just very encouraging yeah. to everyone. But I, because I just feel like you were, oh, you always had the gift even before you went to school. Like I just wonder how that happens. Because wasn't your grandfather or great grandfather? Wasn't there somebody in your family that's an artist, or did you just surprise everybody? No, I think that there, um, there had to have been some kind of creative genetic genes there. Um, I don't I don't know specifically. But because none of your siblings draw is why I'm asking. Like I just kind of wonder how these things just come out. That's why I was just kind of curious. I really don't know. I think part of it may be because I am dyslexic and um, I think pictorially. I think that part of that just comes out of me naturally because that's who I am. And I 
you know, my lifelong goal would be is really to draw that out of people. Just just be yourself. And no, I would never condemn someone no, I know for what I'm no, saying, but for what they what wonder, they produce. But I used to get but... a bad grades in art, and you know, Jim and I used to talk about like how could somebody <laughs> tell you know what I mean? Give you a bad grade if you're sitting there really trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think grading was the hardest thing for me as long as a child was participating and learning something and creating something that was pleasing to look at um, and got some understanding of color theory and, and all kinds of things that you oh, that's can. that's right. There's actually yeah. theory stuff. It's not just doing this. Yeah, there is. All there's right. a lot of theories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to know. Well, what you went to Italy, didn't you, to study? Yes, I went to Italy last How, year. Okay, so were you at a university or where were you to study um, art? I was at the, um, what was the name of that? <laughs> the, you said it didn't have air conditioning or toilet paper or something. I can't remember. Oh my God, Lisa! No, I was at the um, at the Florence Institute uh, through the Michelangelo Institute of of Learning, and um, I just went there on a whim for a month to learn um, a different medium and that was oil painting and it was it was wonderful and I again I was with college students I, mean, so, <laughs> I chose to be with them there were some adults there too but were you in a college dorm? kids are more fun were you in yes a, uh, you were in a dorm yes. okay and I just remember like, oh my gosh that you're living like this I mean you never slept it just seemed like you were sightseeing or painting I mean yeah, you were in class exactly. for how many hours a day um the class time wasn't really it was minimal it was more that the whole experience it's Florence so I spent the entire time there and the museums and the churches and the statues. Did you feed the cats? Don't they have a lot of cats there? <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Did they have cats? I don't know I didn't see oh, any. I just remember when I went there it just seemed like there were cats everywhere. <laughs> uh, I didn't see any. So well, we only have a couple minutes left okay. so what do you wish TV land knew? <laughs> What do you wish people um, knew? Well, I would just like to encourage anyone who has been patient enough to sit through this interview <laughs> that um, that they can do anything they set their mind to, and um, and I just you know believe in yourself, and not just believe in yourself, do it, get it, D O N E done. Yes. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us on the Lisa Saunders Show, and I look forward to seeing you next week.